with that for now. Okay, here we go. Okay. I am sure we're live and I'm not seeing it. So I'm gonna welcome everybody for being here. There we go. Okay. I would like to welcome everybody to our Facebook Live for today. And I am going to be introducing you to Stacy, who is going to talk to us about uh, her uh, experience with essential oils. And um, um, I wanted to also mention that she had written a book. And uh, maybe I'll let you introduce all that, Stacy. Can you introduce yourself and let everybody know a little about your story? Sure. I'm Stacy Haluka, and the book is called the unspoken truth about essential oils, which I co-wrote with Kayla Fioravanti of Ology Essentials. Um, just a little bit about maybe how the book came to be is after my experience, I uh, kept hearing, you know, you need to write a book, you need to write a book. And I said, no, I'm not writing a book. I'm not writing a book. And then fine, I'll, I'll write the book. <laughs> And I, I just said, like, I'm not going to write it, you know, just about my story. I want to write it with some experts uh, in the field. So that's how Kayla and I came to co-author the book together. And we had um, some amazing people that were on board with us. The mm -hmm. forward was by Dr. Robert Pappas. And we had con contributions from Martin Watt and Robert Tisrand and Scylla Hanger Shepherd, who are all safety experts in essential oils they really wanted to get this story out mm -hmm. this is a very a very important story to get out because essential oils now are so much a part of our society and diffusers are sold everywhere essential oils are sold in stores i mean you can go to bed bath and beyond you can go to crazies you know almost a 99 cent store um, but there's no, you don't know where it's come from. You don't know anything about it. Can you talk a little bit about your experience with essential oils? Sure. I joined one of the popular MLM companies back in October of 2014. In November of 2014, I started to get a rash on my arm. So I had applied tea tree oil to it, which I've used tea tree oil for several years. Anytime, you know, I've had a scratch or anything like that, that's worked really well. And so that was my go-to for something like that, <clears throat> pardon me. And, uh, you know, the, the MLM companies, they, they teach you to use essential oils several different ways, several times a day, taking them internally, topically, uh, diffusing them and there's you know a saying that there's an oil for that yeah, and if you have an ailment that to use an essential oil um, <clears throat> so in doing so I caused a lot of damage to my body the mm -hmm. rash uh, in, and it's all in the book so I'll make this a, a little short and sweet but the rash ended up covering my entire body at one point mm -hmm. I had gone to, I ended up in the emergency room a couple of times. I had gone to the doctor several times. Nobody knew what was going on with me. My body uh, had swelled up so badly. I couldn't bend my arms or my legs hardly. Mm. Um, I had lost about just over 20 pounds mm -hmm. and I'm not a big person. <laughs> I lost, you know, uh, a lot of weight within about two months. It was just, I couldn't keep anything inside of me. And I honestly thought I was dying and I was praying to God every night to take me in my sleep because I just could not live through it. I felt like somebody had locked me in a room with uh, fire ants and, and mosquitoes and hornets and, and just left me there. The pain was excruciating. Uh, eventually it had gone to my face and my face had swelled right up and it was just oozing fluid 24 seven. And as you can, there are pictures in the book of this. That's why we decided to do a full color book so people could mm -hmm. really get the visual of what happened. Um, <clears throat> so it was uh, this whole journey of, of that period lasted about eight months time of, of just this whole pain and agony. And, you know, I would reach out to people in, in the company and uh, in the upline and they would tell me, oh, 
initially it was just, oh, it's a good thing. Your body's detoxing. Just keep using the oils. Your body's detoxing. And, you know, did you try this? Did you try this? And they just kept throwing, you know, other protocols and more oils for me to use. And then to do a detox program with the company's oils or with the company's supplements, which have all essential oils in the supplements. So I was taking them internally several times a day, as well as using them topically. And I, it just, you know, it, it sent me into a hell. It, I was in the living hell. Um, it's Can been I... over four years now and my body is still not healed. I want to go back to something basic because a lot of people, I want to keep it at a level of people that maybe don't understand the way that the essential oil system works, but mm -hmm. you're talking about the LAMNs, you're talking about multi-level marketing type of companies that are selling this product. That's right. Um, so when you started using essential oils, where did you get your education from? Where did you decide to learn about essential oils? The education came specifically from the company and the uplines. Um, there were uh, meetings that we would have in person or so on, but most of the essential oil information I, I learned was mm -hmm. from the company directly. Okay. And they have, you know, these universities and so on that you can learn from. And now knowing what I know, mm -hmm. a lot of their information is, is completely unsafe. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's causing a lot of harm to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. When I went public with my story, mm -hmm. I was contacted from people all over the world that had had similar situations happen. And there's a lot of people that are suffering because of this. There've mm -hmm. been, uh, at least two deaths that I know of, of, of babies that have died, children that have died, um, that they can point it for sure to the essential oils. Mm -hmm. And that is my, I mean, we are adults, we can make our own decisions. Yeah. We can, we can choose to do what we want, but you know, some unsuspecting mother who thinks that she's doing the best thing that she can mm -hmm. for her child is actually harming them and causing them harm. And it may not show up today. It may show up, you know, in, in a later time, but if there are so many people, that are inundating themselves and their children and their pets with essential oils that eventually yes. there will be something that's going to show up. And I always say it like, it's like an alcoholic when they start mm -hmm. drinking, there's no issues. There's, there's mm -hmm. no problem. Mm -hmm. And that everybody's body chemistry is different, right? So an alcoholic, you know, may have liver disease in 10 years. Another mm -hmm. one may have liver disease in 20 years. You never mm -hmm. know when that's going to happen, but it's going to happen eventually. And right. it's really, really, like, it terrifies me to see how many people are, are just using these all day long in every way, especially, like I said, with their children and the animals. Right. I think one of the things I really wanted to ask or talk about in, that's really important is that you, your body was rejecting what you were going through. And so you thought it was a detox. But one of the things I really want to talk about in that process that you went through is that detoxing of and by itself naturally is a good thing because we do have, we pick up things in our society all the time. But when you have the kind of reaction that you had, and, and I do recommend that people really get your book and read it because it's so important because essential oils are everywhere and you explain the process that you went through so thoroughly. And there's pictures to actually show how severe your case was that when you have a detox that's serious, you, you that's dangerous to your health, mm -hmm. right? And the the experts uh, that contributed to the book as well, they they all agreed that there, you cannot have a detox reaction from essential oils. It's a myth. It's right. they dispelled it. It does not happen. Mm -hmm. But this is something that is commonly taught out there, right? With people who are not properly trained. And that's what I want people to, to really understand that there's a difference between your body detoxing. And if you have symptoms that are as bad as yours, then you need to go get medical help because no body should detox. If it is in de detoxing at the state you were at, but the fact that you were rejecting, it was like you were having an allergic reaction to it. That's a whole nother thing. And people need to understand that that can happen because what are you dealing with when you're dealing with an essential oil or 
um, a tea or an herb. What is that? Right. So essential oils are chemical compounds and people hear that and they're like, yeah, they are, but they're, they're really, I don't think it's really sinking into how Mm -hmm. powerful these are Mm -hmm. and they should only be used as a medication would, they should not be used as, as often as they are. And if you take a, for example, peppermint, Mm -hmm. you know, a peppermint tea, you can have a peppermint tea. It's going to soothe your stomach. It's going Mm -hmm. to, you know, make your stomach feel better if it's upset. Uh, peppermint essential oils, some of them are equated to about 28 cups of peppermint tea. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs 28 Mm -hmm. cups of peppermint tea. However, they tote it as it's a good thing. It's not. It's Mm -hmm. really not a good thing for your body to have that much. And there's so many aromatherapists that I work with now that are also um, herbalists and deal with uh, holopathic, homeopathic, so many different medications and, and holistic therapies. And every single one of them will say that they will turn to herbal medicine or homeopathic remedies before turning to the essential oils. So the public is not so much aware of how powerful these are. And, and there's so many other things that you can turn to that are much easier on your body. They're much more safe to you. And the one thing that I've learned as well is that anybody can become allergic to Mm -hmm. an essential oil at any time. Anybody can become sensitized to an essential oil at any time. And what I used or what I'm allergic to or what I became sensitized to may not be the same as you, Joanne, because Mm -hmm. your body chemistry is different. And one question, you know, when people see my photographs, they're like, what oils did you use? It's not, I never answer that question because it's not about that. It's about educating that overuse Right. You will eventually have some damage happen to your body. And, you know, sensitization, like I said, is like the alcoholic. It can happen at any time. Right. And if you are allergic to, um, let's say, orange essential oils, you have to look at the chemical compounds of what is in orange essential oil because they all have different chemical compounds. Most mm-hmm. of them have several different chemical compounds that exist in other essential oils. And, you know, the, the toad out there as well is that you can't be allergic to essential oils. That is just simply not true. You absolutely can. It's still the chemical compounds of the plant. Right. And, and, you know, you were talking about it being a chemical compound, but it's a, it's a very saturated one. Like if you drink a a tea of oil, I mean, of orange, that's going to be a mild form of taking that versus doing an essential oil. It's very, very compounded, like you said. And that's what people have to realize. It's the other thing that I know a lot of people do is they mix several of them together. And that's not a good idea either. Can you talk about, you know, that, that part of it as well? Mm-hmm. How people like, I'm, I think I'm going back to because diffusers right now are so big. And they're sold everywhere and people are buying them and then they're using them. And that's the thing that really kind of bothers me because they'll take like several different and put it together and how much they use. And all of that is really important because you're still ingesting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a two part answer I'm going to give to you on that is people creating their own concoctions Mm -hmm. and there's, you go on Pinterest and and there are so many remedies and and, and recipes for, Mm -hmm. you know, flu bombs or colds or migraines or menopause and, and, you know, calm your children. And Mm -hmm. there's so many different things. Again, you are, you are essentially creating your own, uh, you might as well have a medical lab is what you, is how you have to think of it, right? Is right. these are chemical compounds have several chemical compounds in each mm-hmm. essential oils. And now you're combining all of these and, and, and you really don't know what is in there. And that's why you need to do, you know, study aromatherapy. That's mm-hmm. why, you know, aromatherapists study for at least 500 hours just to, mm-hmm. to begin mm-hmm. to, to, to be able to do this. Um, The other part is the diffuser. And Mm -hmm. am I frozen? I'm frozen. You are frozen. There you came back. (laughs) It's diffusing. Uh, Diffusing essential oils is just uh, everywhere. Like I will walk into a store that's diffusing oils and I have to turn around and leave because I don't know what they're diffusing and I don't want to have a reaction. Right. Because I'm sensitized now to so many different oils, Mm -hmm. I can have a reaction like 
so quickly and it may be the rest of my life that way. Mm -hmm. So I really, really want people to think about when they're diffusing the oils that oil and water don't mix, no matter how you try to think about it or put it in a diffuser and you think it's all great, they're still not mixing. So what's happening is when this diffuser is coming out, you're really still getting tiny droplets of pure essential oil that are coming out of the diffuser. Mm -hmm. So that's if you're sitting beside it or your pet sitting beside it or your children, they're mm -hmm. still getting the pure essential oil droplets on them. And that's what people are not understanding or right. even realizing. And as Kayla indicates in the book that you really should not diffuse more than 30 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can get diffusers that go for eight hours. Right. So yeah. there's, you know, spas or mm -hmm. new age stores or, or whatever it is that are diffusing them eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. in, and their clients are coming in and their employees are getting mm -hmm. you know, being exposed to this all mm -hmm. day long. But not only that is people think that essential oils are not really a medicine and they are, they're derivative of a plant. And so they're putting it on their skin, which is a part of what you did and mm -hmm. what caused the problem you had. Do you want to talk about that? Because yeah. you can just do that. Right. Um, <laughs> Now, it's still unsure to me because when I got the oils and such, I was inundated with them. I, I learned about them and I was like, okay, I can diffuse them. I can put them on my body. I can take them internally. And I was doing all of those with different essential oils every day. So when the rash first appeared, appeared on my forearm, it appeared in a place that I had never applied an essential oil. That's very interesting. So that's why, you know, I did not attribute to the oils at all. Because what happens is when your body gets inundated with it, you can have breakouts in places anywhere on your body, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it had moved to my leg after that. I had never put oils on my leg, you know, so it kept moving through my body in places that I had never had it, which is why I believe the detox reaction theory. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't understanding what was going on with my body. Like it was really frustrating you know, I've, I've always been very, very healthy and I, you know, I never take heavy medications, hadn't for years. And I was on the heaviest steroid medications you could take. I was on the wow. heaviest antihistamine medication you could take. Mm -hmm. Like I was inundating with as toxic as my body had become because of the oils. Now I was becoming even more toxic with all the medications I had to take in order to counteract it. But I also mm -hmm. believe that if I didn't, I would have died. Like that's how bad I was. I would have died if I did not use allopathic medication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very important. I mean, I know that um, you could go on the internet and pull up anything you want about essential oils. You can go to the store and put it together. You can, there's so many avenues, but um, the, I think the biggest message here is for people to realize that that is a medicine. That is not just water or oil. It's an actual medicine. And so you really need to be knowing what you're doing. And, and I can say this, and we're not medical doctors. We're not here to tell anybody to stop or start whatever they're doing, but, but all essential oils are not created equal. And that's the other part of this that people don't realize is that there's a lot of stuff that they put, a lot of synthetic fillers that they put in essential oils, especially now that it's been so brought into the public that they can't keep up with the demand. So now they're using synthetic type of oils to mix with the real thing. And that's causing a whole nother problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to touch on, base on that and a couple of things, Joanne, is that there's, you know, when this had first happened to me and I went up public and certain people would say to me, oh, I'm okay because I use brand XYZ and they're the purest, most potent on the earth and so on. And I'm okay because, you know, I'm careful. And there's, you know, so much pushback of people not believing that this can happen. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to just make a little point about this, that it doesn't matter which brand you're using. Yeah. Yes, some of them have synthetics and so on. And some are very, very pure and potent. Uh -huh. That's why you need to be more careful. You need to be extra careful with the most pure and potent one. Right. The other ones, you know, are nice in your diffuser to, to have a scent or someone if they are synthetic. And the whole thing is there is no government regulation in the world 
to regulate <laughs> essential oils. So even if you know you go to Walmart and you can uh-huh. get a bottle of frankincense for six dollars. Oh God, yes. Uh-huh. And it says 100% pure on it. Mm-hmm. Anybody that knows frankincense essential oils knows that you cannot buy mm-hmm. even close to a bottle of frankincense for six dollars. That mm-hmm. just doesn't happen, right? So, mm-hmm. what is really in there, right? Mm-hmm. So, there's so many different ways to look at that as well. Is yes, be be very choosy about the companies you use, and there are a lot of amazing companies out there that are not MLM based, mm-hmm. and there are a lot cheaper than the MLMs, and they are just as good as if not better than the MLM brands. Um, but again, learn outside of what yeah. you know. Yes. Go, there are so several, you know, free aromatherapy courses. There's, talk to an aromatherapist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have a Facebook group that I started, uh, same title as the book, The Unspoken Truth About Essential Oils. And we have close to 5,000 members now. Wow. And it's run, I've been so blessed to have a, uh, women collaborate with me to help me with this group and they actually run it now because it just got beyond anything because I'm not an aromatherapy student I've never studied aromatherapy and the 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 group got way beyond what I could handle so I have aromatherapists actually who are running the group for me Mm -hmm. and there's so you know like we have tons of resources and books Mm -hmm. and courses and and so many things in there that if people wanted to take a look in there too. We have a lot of information. And also in the back of the book is a lot of information of where people can find real training. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. And I hope that people really do get the message about the severity of, um, of how to use it because your, your case is really, and I'm sure you're not the only one. And, And if people read that book and realize even that you had figured out through working with this company that clearly through their system, they had had this before this was, you weren't their first victim, no. the first problem, you know, in their company. Um, do you ever see there being any kind of regulations through the FDA on aromatherapy or essential oils? I, I, for one would love to see that. <laughs> um, but outside of even the regulation, I would love to see, that these MLM companies that are selling the essential oils, Mm -hmm. not only that they need to be regulated, but their training needs to be regulated. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, it's more so about the improper training and the improper usage protocols and guidelines that they give you, because let's face it, their bottom line is the bottom line. They want you to use as many oils as you can, buy as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And that's why they tote you, you know, they're safe to use all day long and all Mm -hmm many different applications. And for me, it's more about the proper education and the training. Yeah, I agree. What do you think some of the myths are that people have about essential oils? That they're all natural, so they can be used whenever you want, as much as you want, that they're pure and organic, Um, that in this one, you know, really kind of hits home is again it's the babies and the children Mm -hmm. and the the animals that you know they're safe to use on baby babies children and animals because they're pure they're organic they're natural well that's Mm -hmm. not true Mm -hmm. again they're chemical compounds right yeah the detox myth is one that i want to dispel as much as possible because again a lot of people that I talked to that had gone through this had been told the same thing that they were just detoxing and too many people are becoming harmed Mm -hmm. and again um, there's resources in the book but if you go on Robert Tisserand's Mm -hmm. uh, website tisserand.org or .com we can post it Mm -hmm. um he has a whole database of injuries. Martin Watt has a whole database of injuries. You can go on there and read people's stories and look at their photographs. So I am not an anomaly. This is, unfortunately, I see that this is only going to become an epidemic if Mm -hmm. things don't change. It it has to be at the rate that people are using it. I know that I go to a natural product show every year and there's this one gentleman that I have gotten to know every year and I talk to him and his daughter had started an essential oil company and he worked with her and he was helping in her developing of her potions. You could call it that. 
And last year when I saw him, he has this terrible respiratory issue going on. And, and it's all because of essential oils. He, he's not believing that he needed to do something different with it. He just needed, like you did, he was using more instead of less or none. And it's really an important thing. And that's somebody who's actually working in that area, but not trained in that area, which is big. Very, very and, important. Uh, a few women who, uh, you know, made soaps with essential oils that became mm -hmm. allergic and sensitized. And so there's all different ways. Like uh, the more you are exposed to it, the mm -hmm. more that the chances are that this is going to happen much more quicker to you. So what are some of the symptoms that people should look for if they're having a reaction to essential oils? Um, now, this is just, again, I'm not an expert. So um, off the top of my head, it's headaches, mm -hmm. dizziness, rashes, mm -hmm. thrush, um, diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the symptoms can be equated to common everyday things as well right? But it's really paying attention to when you started using the oils more, what is, what are you using? How are you taking them? What is going on? Um, it's paying attention to the whole aspect of it. And if something does appear, then just stop all oils, stop diffusing, stop mm -hmm. everything and mm -hmm. see how your body go, you know, reacts then. Mm -hmm. That'll tell you kind of what is going on. Um, with you and the experience that you had, what would be a safe way for people to use essential oils? There, there's that's a whole uh, <laughs> that's a whole ball game of answers as well as I'm I'm not an expert. There are many safe ways that you can use them. Mm -hmm. uh, again, but you should really only be turning to them as a medication. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you are going to diffuse, diffuse only for 30 minutes at a time, at least an hour off break mm -hmm. in between, mm -hmm. um, dilute, 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 even if they say they can be used neat, mm -hmm. never use them neat, always dilute. Uh, there's different ratios for that. And that's all in the book as well. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some essential oils, you know, that people just should not use with children, under mm -hmm. the age of eight, for example, wintergreen is a big one. And wintergreen is in one of the pain medications in the company that I had been with in the MLM. And, you know, they say it's safe, but wintergreen used in large amounts could actually kill a child. That's amazing. And, and this is just not common knowledge. Yeah. That is really scary. I mean, the main thing I think I would say is don't and talk to a professional. That's, you know, that's my answer always now, yeah. Joanne, is yeah. I'm not an expert. I can only go by experience and, you know, and what I've learned from the experts. Mm -hmm. And my answer always is now call an aromatherapist, work mm -hmm. with somebody who is trained mm -hmm. and really get to know, A, the chemical composition of your body and the oils before you even start delving into them. And also like being careful about what you're doing with that. Don't just assume you could put it in your body in any way, mouth, ears, eyes, nose. I mean, don't do it, right? That would be a big one. Absolutely. Because it's not safe. The other thing that we were talking about that people don't realize is that if you put essential oils in your bath, it's not being diluted with the water. It's just floating there. And, and without a carrier oil, you can actually get burns from essential oils. There are several people that I, I know of who have burned themselves in a bath mm -hmm. from the essential oils. So yes, mm -hmm. uh, the waters and oils don't mix. Mm -hmm. And there are ways to be able to mix them, emulsify them uh, beforehand so that the oils are, you can put them in the bath, but there's a process that you have to do beforehand. Again, mm -hmm. it's like the diffuser in the bath, oil and water don't mix. Exactly, yeah. So if you were gonna tell somebody like the biggest, um, your biggest warning to them, what would that be? My biggest warning um, would be to not listen to the person that's untrained. Mm -hmm. And people that are in the MLM say, oh, I got lots of training. Trust me, I spent, I dove into this with my whole heart and I do not 
to, you know, do anything unless I've learned everything. So I learned everything I could mm -hmm. about essential oils, but mm -hmm. I was learning it from the company mm -hmm. and what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So I was, I knew anybody could ask me a question and I knew the answer, except the answers I was giving was taught to me by the company that wants to sell more oils. Mm -hmm. So my biggest thing would be nobody, even if they say they are trained they're unless they are a certified aromatherapist mm -hmm. or a qualified aromatherapist, they mm -hmm. are not trained. So I was trained from the company. I knew everything. So my biggest warning would be do not listen to anybody who thinks that they were trained by an MLM. Mm -hmm. How would you know that you have a, somebody who is legitimately certified to work with you in aromatherapy? Well, they would be able to provide you with their qualifications. Mm -hmm. Just like is, there, is there any level of like good and bad, even in the world of training of aromatherapy? What, um, was there, what would a, a good aromatherapist, what qualifications would they have? Well, that's a good question as well, because just like the essential oils, the aromatherapy qualification industry is not regulated. Exactly. So there are many different schools um, out there. Some, some are old, mm -hmm. dated information. Some are really good. Some are both. Um, again, I have a lot of resources in the book and on the Facebook group of ones that the aromatherapists in general that I work with have mm -hmm. all agreed upon are good places to study from. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know you had the Facebook page. So that's a really good resource for people that have mm -hmm. questions to go and friend your, uh, or like your, your Facebook page. That's what is it called again? It's the same name as the book. So the unspoken yes. truth about essential oils. And like I said, I think we have almost 5,000 members now. Okay. And there's yeah. some really good dialect that goes on in there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of conversations that have already been had. Mm -hmm. uh, most likely if somebody has a question, they can just search it and there's already been a discussion on it. And yeah. we have a lot of good resources in our file section mm -hmm. as well as in proper training schools, books to recommend, reading, and so on. I would say that you want to have somebody that at least has a good amount of hours that they've practiced it in a, what would seem to be a qualified school would be a good start of picking somebody. Mm -hmm. You don't want somebody who just did it on their own or was with a school that is questionable. No. Just do your homework before you pick somebody. Yeah. So if somebody is going to be um, going to an aromatherapist, then, then yeah, I would ask what qualifications they have, where they studied and so mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Now there are some free courses that you or I could take for our mm -hmm. own personal use. Mm -hmm. Right. But I would not take that course and then try to tell you, Joanne, how to use essential oils. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's just kind of a beginner level to help you understand right. a little bit more about them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and that's really important. Um, so in your, where are you now and what are you doing now? How is your health and how are you healing and, and what are you doing and how are you doing? Hmm. That's uh, a question that's a bit loaded. Uh, again, this started over four years ago for me. And after I, I had given you the time frame of about eight, a good eight months where it was the worst. Um, it was a good couple of years where I was still breaking out. I was still having severe reactions. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I would, you know, I would hug somebody and I would have a reaction. I would, you know, just being out in public, mm -hmm. I now can't go near any fragrances. I have, you know, my home is fragrance free. All my products are fragrance free. Uh, perfumes, fragrances, any of that can, can make me overreact or make me have a reaction. So it's, it was a real, real struggle for me. And I was very frustrated and I spent countless hours in money on supplements and herbs and stuff to, you know, try to boost my immune system and, and get healthy again. Now, as the experts will, will say that once you become sensitized, it may be something you're dealing with for the rest of your life. So I'm going to have to live with that and make peace with that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are still 
some spots on my body where it's not so much a rash, but they're, they're almost like white spots that are just always itchy. So mm -hmm. I still have you know, across my back, some marks on my leg and my body, and mm -hmm. they'll flare up red from time to time, and then they'll go white and they'll go red and white. So mm -hmm. I still have marks on my body that, that flare up. Do you find that foods uh, affect you as well now? Are you sensitive to even like if you were allergic to the uh, orange essential oil, can you eat oranges? Are you having problems with that kind of thing? I don't, I don't, haven't detected anything like that um, at all. So I'm hoping that that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's, um, it's been really difficult to pinpoint because you're exposed to so many different yeah. things all the time. So I've, it's not been easy for me to, to actually pinpoint what, what is setting it off. I mean, other than me putting myself in a bubble and never leaving my house <laughs> and knowing, you know, what I'm in contact with all day long. That's the only way that I'll ever really figure it out, I think. I think somehow I keep going back to legislation and mm. control and that kind of thing. Is there anybody out there that is spearheading that kind of control over this? Not that I know of. Hmm. Not that I know of. Um, I wish I had an answer for that. Have you ever thought of doing that? I wouldn't even know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's people out there in the world that can help you with that. Because you, yeah. I mean, somebody can do it, but it's going to have to take somebody like you because your experience was so severe and you're not alone in this. Mm. So it, it, to me, it's like the Wild West out there with this. And the fact that it, it's so popular right now. So it's making people a lot of money and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. They're Absolutely. not gonna be on the side, the protection side of people, you know, they're not gonna watch over them. So we need some kind of, although isn't there something that has to do with herbs anyway? Cause this is in the world. If you don't know herbs, you shouldn't be working with essential oils. That's right. And that's why most, of the, most aromatherapists you'll find are herbalists as well. Right. So they, they you know, have studied both methods. Right, because uh, the herb, it's essential oil is just a derivative of the herb. And, and I don't know how many times we could say that, but that is what it is. And that's what people need to know. It's a concentrated form of an herb. That's right. You need to start with a tea that's then, right. and then work your way with somebody who knows what they're doing. So it Absolutely. seems like, isn't there any, some, I gotta check that out. You got me going now on the ledges. <laughs> be a lot, something going here with this. Uh, um, what, I know that you are a big educator now in this, you want people to know mm -hmm. this is really an important issue. What would you like to share with people about that? Yeah, I think we've covered most of it is, is the most important thing for me is the education and don't, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Too many people that have been harmed drank the Kool-Aid from the people selling essential oils, mm -hmm. uh, the education they got from the company, they drank the Kool-Aid and... I drank it. I, I drank it all. And yeah. I thought, you know, I was doing the right thing. And, and now um, that's, that's always my message is, is, you know, get proper training or work with an aromatherapist and really just don't even use them. Don't even use them until you know mm -hmm. about them. And, you know, I know that some have said in aromatherapy school that they have to learn, you know, one essential oil before they can move on to the next one. And they have to learn the chemical constituents of the, the oils and, you know, the, the chemical constituents of each individual's bodies. And, and, and it's, it's, like I said, it's almost like you need a lab if you're going to be working with these. Mm -hmm. They are very, very potent. And, let, you know, I'm not, I just want to say here as well, I'm not against essential oils. I'm really not. They, they have done some amazing things. And I've talked to people that have amazing stories of healing that have happened. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's perfect. I think it's so amazing that people haven't had to turn to modern medicine. 
Mm -hmm. that they could find an alternative way. Mm -hmm. However, they did it through working with an aromatherapist. Mm -hmm. And that's an important point because it's not that the essential oils are bad. It's no. that you're playing Russian roulette because yes. you don't know how, if you don't understand the chemistry, you don't know how it's playing with your body. And so you don't know if you're going to walk away with a problem or if you're going to be healed from it. That's right. So it's really that simple to invest in yourself by having a professional help you because the other thing people do is they're grabbing in the dark and you don't know which one is actually what you need. So how much of what you're using is really not helpful to you where if you went to a professional, they're going to take you right to what is really helpful for you. Right. Yeah. Or they'll, they'll teach, you know, give you an alternative way of using it like mm -hmm. homeopathic medicine yeah. or herbal medicine. And they're, there's so many other ways to get the healing that your body needs without inundating it with something that could eventually cause you harm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Can you tell people what homeopathic is if they don't know? Uh, I really don't know a lot about homeopathic medicine my, myself. Um, I've, again, it's from the way that it's created is they take let's say a plant or, or they'll, they'll take a plant and then they make uh, a mother tincture from this plant and then they reduce it down uh, to, I don't know, it's, it's again, it's chemistry, it's chemical and it's reduced to a point where that our, our bodies are able to, to absorb it and use it better. So generally I think with homeopathic medicine is if you are having uh, some sort of ailment, they'll give you something to mimic that ailment. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't mean to put you in that. Is yeah. It, you're, but what I find interesting about homeopathy versus uh, uh, essential oils is it's the opposite. Because yes. uh, essential oil is magnifying to the degree up where homeopathy is going to the degree down. Correct. You're That's way a good better, way of saying it. <laughs> we are going with the homeopathy than with the essential oils. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So, you know, and that's what I think um, people, like I said, with the peppermint tea and 28 cups of peppermint tea, you only have to take one drop and it's 28 cups of peppermint tea and they tote it as this good thing. And it's like, uh -huh. no, bigger is not always better. Exactly. Our bodies can't handle that much at once it's not we're not meant to have that much at once so what you're saying is you know going down to the herbal medicine or homeopathic remedies is to me is a much safer way right to have your body heal itself we always should start with the food so if like you know we've been using uh the orange because peppermint is not something everybody eats all the time so we'll stay right. so you eat an orange you're not going to eat 28 oranges. You can't, and you're going to get sick before you do. So why do you think that you can have a drop of this really concentrated essential oil and think it's not going to have a negative effect on you? Now, I do understand that there's the healing part of it and, and that part of it is good, but you don't know how you're going to react. So that's where we're saying, get the advice. But in general, you're not going to like uh, people that are into juicing, if you don't do that in the right way, it's the same thing. You're putting such a big concentrated amount of something into your system without having what nature has put together naturally, which can cause a problem in your system. And that's really all we're saying. Right. Yes. Be wise. It, it's, and that, again, this is how the MLMs say that it's a good thing you know 28 oranges in one drop it's a good thing you don't have to eat that many oranges <laughs> or you don't have to drink that much tea yeah. right and it's like no really we don't need that much right we don't unless you're really in a situation there could be there's some situations where you do but overall you don't and the normal person does not but the one thing that we've touched on um, which I've had on my mind to come back to is that you have to really take into account that you're putting an essential oil into the air, like using the diffuser and not all essential oils are good for animals. And then again, you're going to go back to whether they can take as much that you're putting out into the atmosphere. 
Right. So really, I know we've touched on the animals and we've touched on children, but they don't have a voice. So we have to be careful with that, right? Absolutely. There's uh, one of my admins in the group is an aromatherapist and she works with animals as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So we've learned quite a bit from her. And mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, again, they don't have the voices, you know, the children yeah. and the animals, mm -hmm. they just, you know, whatever you want to give them or take them or <laughs> whatever it is, they, they have to accept it. Well, sometimes, I guess what I'm saying too, is sometimes people don't even think, yeah. oh, I have a cat. And I'm going to use this essential oil that could be poisonous to that cat, let alone it being too much for that cat. That's right. And yeah. there are several oils that are poisonous to animals. Exactly. And, you know, people are diffusing them in their homes or they're cleaning with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the animals are walking on the floor that they just cleaned mm -hmm. with an oil that's toxic to them. Right. So you really need to even know in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything you really want to share with people that maybe we didn't cover? Because I feel like we went off into this technical and I'm very <laughs> sorry I took you there, but it's like, I know that's big to me, um, that we may have missed in the beginning when you're walking through your story. Uh, I don't think so. I think we've covered enough basics, at least mm -hmm. for people to get an idea. And there, like I said, there are websites out there that have the information on it of other people's reactions this is just not my story mm -hmm. there are people that have had reactions as severe if not more severe than mine mm -hmm. i was just the one that came out with my story and said enough is enough and mm -hmm. it was after i was getting you know being contacted from so many people mm -hmm. when i first went public that i thought this like this has to this information has to get out there mm -hmm. it's it's just becoming an epidemic and it's just breaking my heart. Yeah. Yeah. I can see how it would. You physically can feel how other people are going to feel. I mean, you've been through it. So you would want to see people not have to go through the pain that way. For sure. The hardest question I always had from these people was, what did you do to get better? And I can't answer that question for them. And I know the desperation state that they're in. I understand it completely but I can't answer that question for them because I'm, like I said, I'm still dealing with it and trying to figure it out on my own. Mm -hmm. And really thank you for doing that. I'm sorry you had to go through it, but there are so many people that experience that and maybe you'll be able to help people through the process as you've gone through the process. Cause I know we didn't really get into the depths of how bad you really had gotten. But um, if people even look at your book, which can you pick your book up? I'm thinking I have mine on my Kindle, so I couldn't, I don't have a hard time. Oh. <laughs> I was like, how am I going to show this book? I saw my Kindle um, that people get your book and yeah. go through your story. Cause it's really very touching and very sad that you had to experience that kind of pain, but you were in really bad shape. Yeah. Yeah, I really was. I'm just trying to, you know, find a couple of pictures to maybe show I think I the worst is when it started on your face, when you were using the tea tree oil on your face. Yeah, so. oh. And that you was, can describe the pain that you were going through as well. That was the face. Oh. Um, it was torture. It yeah. was like I, I was praying to God every night to take me in my sleep because I couldn't live another day. I didn't think I could make it through another day. It was the most horrendous thing I can ever imagine. I wanted to rip my body apart. I didn't, I just wanted to die. Yeah. Uh, Mary, I, you know, one of the things I want to tell everybody, thank you for letting me just talk with the person I don't answer anymore, but I kind of check in. And Mary, uh, you were talking about that she had a chihuahua that uh, had liver enzyme issues. Mm -hmm. And through investigating, she found it was an essential oil from the diffuser. So there you go right there with somebody just on this call that had that experience. And she also is right about you can have reactions to any kind of pharmaceutical medication that you um, take as well. The problem with that, though, is that there's so many medications out there that kill people and they don't take it off the market. Um, mm -hmm. But if this got out, then we would not be able to even use essential oils, but that's a whole other subject. Uh, but you're right. You can, you know, that's the point to it. And I love what you said, Mary, is that 
you can have a reaction to anything. So be careful what you ingest. That's really the biggest part of it, for sure. Yeah, that's a really good point. And again, what the MLMs teach you mm -hmm. is that it's impossible to have a reaction. It's impossible for you to have an allergic reaction. They, you know, and, and it's just not true. It's so not true. Well, I find it interesting that I've talked to people about the fact that I'm allergic to rosemary. And their first reaction is, how can you be allergic to rosemary? Well, you could be allergic to anything. Mm -hmm. and I love rosemary and I love smelling it, but I can't. It's like I can only smell a little of it and then walk away. Be that's just the plant um, because I, I'll get itchy and, you know, just I don't react well to it. So you could be allergic to, you know, a lot of people are allergic to oranges mm -hmm. in just by eating them. Mm -hmm. And they're not thinking about the fact that you're concentrating that in your air or your bathtub or in your creams or. <laughs> right. I think the biggest thing that worries me is that tea tree oil is very strong and people use tree tree, tea tree oil like it's honey. Mm. To me, it's not just tea tree oil though. Yeah. People use a lot of oils like they're honey and a lot of them are very powerful and strong and should not be used that much. Mm-hmm. I agree. Thank you. That's really important. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody, I'm going to look for a minute. Does anybody have any questions for Stacy? I'm going to give you a minute to add a question. I also want to add that we'll keep monitoring um, your questions here. If you have any questions for everybody mm -hmm. that watches the replay and, uh, and thank everybody for being on our, our interview tonight. Uh, sorry, I kind of went off into a little wild toads because this is a passionate thing for me because I have gotten training in aromatherapy and herbology, and I really understand the importance of the herb. It's medicine. And a lot of the pharmaceutical medicines are derivatives of plants, of herbs. Yes. And so I think because it has an herb title to it and not a medicine to it from a pharmaceutical company, that we all of a sudden think it's not as potent or as important. And there's a lot of healing to herbs, but you have to know what you're doing. You can't, Absolutely. you know, throw it to the wind and hope it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's like any medicine, like I'm deathly allergic to penicillin. And I know that. So I'm not going to go take a, any kind of derivative of penicillin. So it would be the same in, in the herbal world as well. Right. And that's another way that I have stated it as well. It's, it's like when you're working with the MLMs and some, you know, one of the wellness advocates is giving you an essential oil and they're telling you how you can use it and so on. I, I liken it to that. You know, I went to the doctor and he gave me a medicine, but he didn't get, tell me how to use it. You know, he didn't yeah. tell me what the contraindications were. He didn't tell me, you know, the good, bad and the ugly. Yeah. So he just went, you know, go home and, and take this twice a day without giving me any more information on it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. And it's not just the MLMs. I mean, you can go to any store and yeah. buy one off of the shelf. It, the, right. Nobody knows, you know, what the chemical constituents are. Again, you know, right. we've, we've talked about this and, and you don't know what's going to happen. Right. You don't until it's you have a bad reaction. And that's not the way you need to go is to have a bad reaction. So get help. Right. That's really the bottom, the bottom line. And, you know, I think really it, we've asked a lot of questions and we've covered a lot of ground, but people just need to take responsibility and do the research themselves before they go see somebody about, you know, does it feel right? Does it feel like that person is going to help you? And do they have the qualifications and do they have the experience? How long have they been practicing? That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so the, the book is available uh, in full color paperback or Kindle on Amazon. Okay. And I love my Kindle version. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, I still prefer the old books. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many books, so I love that I can put them all on Kindle and read them and take them everywhere. <laughs> my yeah, it's much easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, I want to also mention that on Wednesday the 9th, I'm going to be doing an interview with Gloria Basil, Boisel, 
and it's going to be breaking free from your barriers at 5:30. So I'm just going to FYI everybody that I'm going to post it probably today. And uh, if you have any questions, um, then please post them, and we'll get to your questions. And uh, and thank you so much, Stacy, for having this call with me. I know that it's a very important subject, and I hope you were able to get your word out and feel like you've covered all the areas that you wanted to cover. I, I think so. I think we covered quite the range tonight, Joanne. So <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And I'm, you know, I'm available if anybody needs to ask questions or contact or, you know, I, I don't have all the answers mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm not an expert by any means. I always tell people I'm just someone who, you know, went, went through a bad situation and is turning it into something good. So I can at least direct them to somebody that could help them if they have anything that I can't answer. I really love how you stayed with that you aren't an expert, but you have a story to tell. And even when I would go down little rabbit holes that you brought it back to, pay attention to all of it is the same, even though there's degrees of difference that all of it is the same and you need to be careful with all of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the main point. And Mary wants to wish you the best to mm -hmm. return to Thank you. health. <laughs> Thank you. And so do I. I, I, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and <sighs> healing and positive energy for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll All get right. There. So thank, thank you so much for being on the call. Thanks. Have a beautiful night. You too.